Are you dependent on insulin or other medications that have to be kept cold? Maybe you have a baby at home that's on milk or formula that you've got to keep refrigerated. Or maybe you've just got food that you don't want to go bad and have to replace in the event of a power outage or other emergency. Today we're going to talk about emergency refrigeration. Forget about Zier pots, they just don't get cold enough. Forget about those little $20 six pack uh, thermoelectric refrigerators for offices. They don't get cold enough, they're not that power efficient. Today we're going to talk about a compressor style DC refrigerator. We're going to battery power it and then I'm going to show you how to solar power it. Ready? Let's get going. This is a DC compressor style RV refrigerator from Bouge RV. This is the 22 quart model, runs about 200 bucks and it's adjustable between freezing and cooling. It'll go from negative eight Fahrenheit to 50 Fahrenheit. So if you're doing insulin or something like that, that needs to be cool, but not necessarily frozen, you can adjust the temperature. On maximum power, this thing draws 45 watts. It's really not a lot. And then once it gets there and switches to eco mode, it only draws 35 watts. Let's take a look inside and we'll see what 22 quarts looks like. So that's a one gallon jug of water and I, it really fits this, uh, eats up almost all of it. I can't put a second one on top, I tried. Here's my little mixer jar of milk. So that's just like a tall boy, that fits in there just well. I can do three across and five this way so I can get about 15 in here. And that's designed to take two stacks of soda cans on top of each other and still close. And then I can go three across and five this way. So definitely is designed around cans. And for medication, it'll fit a whole lot of medication bottles. I, I couldn't even tell you how many, probably hundreds. So this unit comes with both car cords and a home AC power supply. So you can chill it down while you're at home and while you're packing, it takes about 45 minutes, and then plug it into your car while you're driving to your campsite or whatever. Bouge also makes this really cool little power supply. So this is 12 volts only. It's got a cigarette socket and USB ports on it for your phone. This is 220 watt hours. So this will power that fridge for about six hours by itself. So for tailgating or picnicking or something like that, perfect. It does have a, a DC input that you can plug a solar panel into, but it maxes out at 100 watts. So if the sun is out, it'll keep this thing going and then give you a couple of hours uh, in the evening uh, when it gets dark, but isn't enough to make it all the way through a 24 hour period. I'm really impressed with how inexpensive this thing is, uh, considering what you get for it and uh, the fact that you've got other capacity like plugging your phone in and stuff like that or fans or whatever. So this is a really neat little add on, but it's not gonna get you through a 24 hour period. We'll talk about that later. So how long does it take this thing to cool down? So I'm gonna take this thing from completely warm, put a gallon of water inside here, plug it in and let it go and see how long it takes uh, to get down to 37 degrees. All right, let's do it. So how do we keep this thing running? So the manual says, and uh, kind of math confirms, that to go for 24 hours, you need about one kilowatt hour or bat of battery, so 1,000 watt hours. What does that mean? Well, a 100 amp hour 12 volt lithium ion battery is about 1,200 watt hours. So 100 amp hour should get you a little more than 24 hours. It'll give you some safe fudge. So one of these per day, okay? They're running around $200 these days for a 100 amp hour. The compressor just kicked on. So you need about 100 amps a day. Now, I don't have to worry about inverters or anything because the refrigerator has a cigarette socket. So all I've done is taken 
this cigarette socket to jumper wires and connect it onto the battery terminals. And now I can plug the 12 volt socket directly into here and run this thing for about a day. Let's talk about solar. Everyone wants to know about solar. So here's how the math on solar works. You take the amount of power you need, in this case, we'll call it a thousand watt hours, divided by the number of peak sunlight hours in your city. And that changes depending upon where you live and what time of year it is. In Texas, Arizona, Florida, it's four or five hours approximately. So I have a thousand, I need a thousand watt hours divided by four is 250 watts of solar. So I need to have at least 250 watts of solar to recharge the battery during the day to basically make it through the night and then pick back up the next day. Okay. So 250 watts of solar is kind of a good benchmark. You'll likely need more than that because solar panels are not 100% perfectly efficient. So what does that look like? Let's see. This is a Dokio 160 watt folding solar panel. So it's got four panels at about two feet by two feet. I really like this because it comes with a charge controller. We'll talk about that in a second. Folds up nice and small, but this would not be enough to keep this going. You would need basically two of these. They do make this in a bigger version, but it only goes to like 200 watts. So to keep this thing going for 24 hours continuously, you're looking at two of these. However, if you're just talking about a day trip, you know, camping or tailgating or something like that, and you have one of these little power packs, this will actually plug directly into it and extend the life of this. Basically, since this thing only draws 50 watts, you'll be running off the solar and charging this. So when the sun goes down at six or seven o'clock, then the battery would kick on. So you'd be running on solar during the day and this at night. But since this is only six hours or so, it's not gonna make it all the way through the night to the other side, to the next morning where it could kick back on. So just not quite big enough not quite big enough. So this would extend you for a day, but wouldn't keep it going continuously. As I mentioned, the reason why I love this Dokio folding solar panel is the fact that it comes with a charge controller. So if I had two of these, or if I had the bigger version, hooking this thing up is really, really simple. Battery. Little alligator clips. It lights up. Panel goes there and we're ready to go. So I throw this thing out in the sun and it will keep my battery charged. Uh, like I said, this is not big enough to go for a full 24 hours, but we we'll, would get most of one day. So people will ask about the price and comparing this thing to something like a Yeti. So it is $200 for a cooler that's relatively small, plus the battery, which is in there $200, and then the solar panels, which is in there $200 or so. So you're in it for a couple hundred bucks versus buying a Yeti ice chest for two or $300 that is significantly larger than this. That is true. But keep in mind, in a traditional ice chest, you gotta keep putting ice in it. So you will never be able to get 100% of the capacity of a normal ice chest because you have to make room for 20 or 40 pounds worth of ice. And your stuff's gonna get soggy as the ice melts and turns into water in the bottom of your cooler. Also, even if you buy a Yeti for a couple hundred dollars that advertises five to seven days of ice retention, it will eventually melt you will have to replace that ice at some point between five and seven days. So if you're in North Carolina or Florida where you're not gonna have ice or power for some time, the only way to keep that stuff cold is with a solar or battery powered DC fridge like this. So if you're looking for something long-term, you know, greater than seven days or so, this is really the best way to go if you you just can't 
depend upon a steady supply of ice. Thanks, everybody. I hope that this was helpful and useful. And uh, please drop a comment down below, and we'll see you on the next one.